doing today? We appreciate y'all taking some time out to deal with us, to deal with the church of God. You understand? We ain't gonna bite. So what we're going over now is our people need to wake up out of the deep sleep that we're in. And I made a comment. I mentioned that the Christian pastors that we go to, they, they don't explain the Bible. They're not able to explain the Bible to us. You got to be on camera, sis. So we're like, we out here to, to edify our people. Check the signs out. I'm going to ask you a question, though. What's your nationality? <laughs> All right, well, you fill out a job application, or you, you fill out black, you say black, African-American, right? Let me ask you a question. Is it possible for, for not, not just our nation, for any nation of people to be, to be really called an African-American? Where'd that term come from? So that's what we do. We just walk around and we accept what, what our oppressors give us and tell us who we are yeah. instead of who God tells us we are. Right, right. right. But our people, that's, that, that's going on with that drunken again. Read that again. Watch this. Let me show you something. Listen, listen to how the Bible talks about us. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 9. Go ahead. Stay yourselves and wonder. Don't our people wonder what's going on with our people today when they see all the madness, our people getting shot down in the streets? They see us living in the worst neighborhoods. They see us, they see how we're getting the worst education. They see all these things. The Most High God is telling us to stay ourselves and wonder, meaning stop for a second, sit down and listen and wonder. Read. Cry ye out and cry. Cry ye out and cry, because our people are in a state of mourning. We don't have no comfort on this, in this planet here, on this, in this country here. Read. They are drunken, uh -huh. but not with wine. It says our people are drunken, but not with wine. Well, what are we drunken with? Yeah. Uh -huh. Liquor and alcohol, that's one thing. Get Micah again real quick. Let me show you something. This is what we drunken with. Micah 2 and verse 11. Go ahead. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. Read. Saying, I will prophesy unto thee. I will teach them the Bible. Read. Of wine. Of and, wine. And a strong drink. Go ahead. He shall even be the prophet of this people. That is the prophets that we were given as a people because of our disobedience to God. Prophets that's going to lie to us and teach us hypocrisies. You understand? So that's why we're drunk. But that's why we walk around not knowing what our nationality is. An African-American means that you come from two so-called Europeans. That's right. Leo Scipio Africanus came over, he sailed this land, and he named the land after himself, right? Amerigo Vespucci came over to America, conquered this land, and they named the land after themselves. That's what they do. What's that in Psalms? Psalms 48. What's going on? What y'all look? What's going on with that picture there? You know who that is? Let me ask you a question. Who is this person right here? Because that's part of the lies that we've been taught as a people. Who is it? All right. All right. If we wasn't here with these signs right here, and you saw, you saw, you went into someone's grandma's house or someone's auntie's house, and you saw this picture right here, or this picture, or this picture, which picture y'all see? Which one? That one. And who do they say that man is? God. Say that's God, right? They say that's Jesus Christ, right? But we accept that, right? Why? Give me Jose in three and four. We were brought up like that, right? You ask yourself, why? Yeah. Is that the true image of Jesus Christ? Nope. Or does, I mean, I'm asking, like, what, what do you know about this image here? Is that really, do you even believe in that? I believe in Jesus. You believe in Jesus? What Jesus? I always said Jesus. Huh? What Jesus? In the sky? Did Jesus walk on the earth? Jesus, period. Give me 1 John chapter 4. No, is it 1 John 4? 1 John 4. We're going to go through who the true image of Jesus Christ is, right? And then we're going to deal with why they gave us this image here, okay? Okay. All right. Here you go. 1 John chapter 4, verse, right, verse um, 2. First John chapter Matter four. Fact, start at verse one. Go ahead. First John chapter four, verse one. Bring it out. He loved. Believe not every spirit. Okay, what's your names? Bond. Bond. April. 
Vaughn and April, the Bible is telling us to believe not every spirit. Don't believe everybody that's bringing this Bible out to you. Right, read. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. It says try the spirits. So whenever y'all go to church, sometimes, sometimes right? Y'all watch T.D. Jakes on TV or some of them, that most, of, most of our people now, we don't walk into the church, but on Sunday we want some form of righteousness, so we're going to turn on the Potter's yeah. Day or whatever yeah. you call that thing, right? And you turn it on and you listen to the lies and philosophies that, that's being taught Bring it out. by our own people. But the Most High God is telling you to believe. Matter of fact, we watch Joel Osteen, some of our people. We go to the, to the white man to, to, to get our information on the scriptures, to find out about our history and ourselves. Right? But read on. Beloved, believe not every spirit. So it says, beloved, don't believe every spirit that's coming out of this Bible, that's teaching you this word. Read. But try the spirits. You must try the spirits. You must prove the spirits. Read. Whether they are of God. Whether they be of God. Meaning whether they are actually giving you the information out of the Bible or they're speaking from their own understanding or their own doctrine that they want to teach our people. Read verse 2. Oh, okay, finish, finish. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Because there are many false prophets that are gone out into the world. Read. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. This is how you know the Spirit of God right now, though. Because you mentioned you, you worship Jesus Christ in the sky, right? You believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, you really don't don't really know how he looks, right? Read. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ actually stood on this earth here and came in the flesh. If he came in the flesh, we had to know he had to come as a nation, as some type of nationality, right? You're walking in the flesh, right? So as you walk in the flesh, you can say that you're a so-called black person, right? African, you know who you are. So the question is, you confess Jesus Christ coming to the flesh. What color was Christ? Three. Is of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ was more than just a spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ actually came down and walked in the flesh is of God. That's right. That's what the Bible says. What? So anytime you go to church and they teach you, oh, God is a spirit, Jesus is a spirit, nobody knows who he looked like, he was not, he's in the air, so that's a lie. Because the Bible tells you that, read it again. Verse, verse 2. Yeah. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Know the Spirit of God. This is what God wants you to know. Read. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Every spirit that confessed that Jesus Christ actually walked this earth in a flesh and he came from a nation of people. Because you don't walk this earth in the flesh and not have a nation of people behind you. That's right. Read. It's of God. It's of God, but check this out. Read. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is coming to flesh. Every spirit that says Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh. Nobody knows what color he was. It doesn't matter what color he was. It doesn't matter. He's in the sky. Read. It's not of God. That, that spirit is not of God. Now, we're not condemning our people for thinking that. Because we understand where that doctrine comes from. We understand that they're being taught lies to keep them at, in a destroyed state. Right. But read on. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whoa. It says this is that spirit of Antichrist. That spirit of Antichrist is what's pumped into our people to prevent us from getting the riches and the glory that's promised to us in this Bible here. That's right. So they don't want us to believe in the true image of Christ. They give us this here and have us put that image in our households. They give us this here, and we go walk up into a church and worship that. But what is the true image of Christ? Is Christ's image written in the Bible? No. Hey, is the image of Christ written in the Bible? Does the Bible say what color Christ is? What nation of people Christ came from? No. But the scriptures that we just read said that it's important to know that, right? It just said that because that's when you know you're walking in the spirit of God. When you don't believe that, you're walking in the spirit of Antichrist. But a lot of times we think about Antichrist, what do we think about? A goblin, a ghoul, he's an Antichrist, uh, Obama, or some crazy Bilderbergs and all these guys walking around. So they're the 666, they're the Antichrist, right? Bring it out! It tells you the spirit of Antichrist is not believing in Jesus Christ. The black Messiah actually walked this earth in the flesh and had a nation of people. That's right! Let's get the... You said the image of Christ is not written in the Bible. So let's get that real quick. Real? Your Revelations chapter. We're going to show you that today. Y'all got a flyer? 
Y'all got a flag? It, hey, somebody give them another flag so that they can follow along. We want y'all to follow along. Because we're not, listen, it says, try the spirits, whether they be of God. Right? If you had a Bible in your car, pull it out and read it with us. Because your job is not to just take our words and walk off with it and say, oh man, this guy here told us that Jesus Christ was black. I believe it. That's what we do in a Christian church. Our job is to tell you what's in there, and your job is to be is to follow along and read and study it for yourself. When you follow what a man tells you, what's that called? That's called an occult. You're in a cult because you're following blindly. Well, let's get this now. Get Revelations chapter 1. Start at verse 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Bring it out. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the scripture says this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. I'm going to reveal Jesus Christ to, to God's chosen people that they read. Which God gave unto him uh -huh. to show unto his servants. That proves that God gave unto John to show unto the servants of God. What? Things which must shortly come to pass. Things which must shortly come to pass. Read verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. It says, blessed is he or she that readeth. Read. And they that hear the word of this prophecy. And they that hear the word. So guess what, April? What's your name again, sis? And Vaughn, it says, blessed is he or she that readeth. You're reading it now. It's on the flyer. That's a direct quote from the Bible. We ain't rewrite nothing and put nothing that's just copied and pasted right there on that flyer. You're reading it and you're hearing the word of this prophecy. So what does it say again? Blessed is he that reads. It says blessed are you because you're not now going to learn the truth of who you are and who your true Messiah is and who can actually give you deliverance from the lowest state that we're in as a people. That's right. You understand that? Read. <laughs> and keep those things which are written therein. It says keep those things though. That means you read it, you hear it, and you keep it. To, you keep it. Meaning you understand it. Meaning you hold on to it, you believe it. Read verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Let me ask you a question now. That said Jesus Christ's head and his hair were white. Vaughn, look at your hair. <laughs> your hair is part white, part black. You got a uh, little brown in there, right? Yeah. But it's white like wool. Whose hair has that? Who has woolly texture hair? Our people, right? Yeah. Does this man have it? Nope. This man? Nope. Mel Gibson. <laughs> All the people that they got playing Jesus Christ in the movies and TV shows, do they have woolly hair? <coughs> Ask yourself why. Why would they post that image then? Why would they give us that image? You don't know? You're going to keep going though. Read on. As white as snow. As white as snow. So his hair was a full gray like my man over there across the street. <laughs> Read. <coughs> See? And, yeah. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire because they were red. They were red because Christ drank wine in moderation. You ever drank wine before? What happens when you drink wine? You get mellow a little bit. And your eyes turn red, right? Yeah, I don't mean that you drunk. Christ, feel it exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> he drank wine in moderation, though. He wasn't doing things to get out the spirit and not be sober-minded, right? But he said, wine makes the man's heart merry, right? Read on. And his feet, like unto fine grass. Where is the king of honor? I'm looking at your feet right now. Is your feet a different color from the rest of your body? No. Look at your feet. Look at her feet, April. What about your feet, April? You got your feet covered. You want to take your shoes off, take your feet out? No. no? Well, let me ask you a question. If you see somebody's feet, can you tell what color they are? Yeah. Can you tell what color their face is, Vaughn? I'm looking at your feet. I know what color your face is. Is it any different? No. It's no different, right? So it says Christ's feet is what? It's at his feet. Like unto fine brass. Christ's feet was like unto fine brass. So what color is fine brass? What color is brass? It's, oh, matter of fact, is, is brass this? Is this brass? Is brass a, a, a pinkish, a pinkish, palish color? No, brass is the derivative of brown, right? Like bronze. But watch this, read. As if they burned 
and a furnace. I'm going to give you all a little bit of homework. What I want you to do, if you have a cell phone or when you get home to a computer or whatever, pull up burned, burnt brass. See what color it is. What you'll find out is burnt brass, you become a very, very dark-skinned person. That's what burnt brass is. So by Christ's feet being the color of burnt brass and having hair like wool, what color is Jesus Christ? He was a so-called, there you go. Right, but not, and, and it's a good thing you point to that sign, right? So-called African-American, right? Because what you're going to understand is that Christ comes from the same tribe as the so-called African-American. That's right! Read that. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. And bring it on, out. Then get on Jeremiah to show what color Judah is. Read. For it is evident. It says it is evident. That what? That our Lord sprang out of Judah. It says it is evident that our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah. Right? So by looking at Christ, that, that shows that he came in the flesh again. Because he said he came from the tribe of Judah. So just like I can look at you right now, Sister Vaughn, and say, hey, it is evident that Vaughn is a so-called African-American woman. It's evident. It's evident that April is a so-called African-American woman. Now, you, if, if you come out and start speaking a different accent and something, oh, no, no, she, she's so-called Jamaican or whatever. But we know that you're a person of color and you've come from one of these tribes based over how I'm looking at it. It's evident. I can see it in you. And why was it evident though? Why was it evident that Christ came from the tribe of Judah? Why do you think he said it was evident? Because there was something symbolic about the tribe of Judah. What did they look like? Read. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 14. 14 and verse 2. Watch this. Judah mourner. Says the tribe of Judah is in mourning. Read. And the gates thereof languish. The gates. Their leadership is languishing. Their leadership is lacking. That's why our people in the state that we're in now. Read. They are How you black. doing, bro? Hey, bro, if you got a minute, come over here and check us out, man. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. Vaughn. Read it again. They are black. They are what? They are black. Unto the ground. Unto the ground. Why did he say they are black unto the ground? Huh? Who is he talking about there? Read it again from the top. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah Mordor. It says Judah. We just read in the other scripture that it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. We just read in Revelations that Christ had feet of burnt brass and hair of wool. So what color is the tribe of Judah? So what color is Jesus Christ? And he says black unto the ground. Guess what? Guess who else? You know, Genesis 2 and 7. Let's deal with this color for a second. Because our people want to think that color is not in the Bible. When color is one of the most important aspects of the Bible. That's so right. People walk around thinking it's a white man's book. Huh. The Bible was written by a white man for a white man. The Bible is not written by, ain't no white man put it, matter of fact, ain't no book in this Bible written by any person that is not of color. That's, That's right. right. We can prove the color of the people that wrote these books. Bring it out. In the Bible, the Bible tells us Moses was a so-called black man. Yeah. The Bible tells us Paul was a so-called black man. Yeah. The Bible tells us Jesus Christ was a so-called black man. That's right. How the hell was the Bible written by a white man? It doesn't make no sense. But read Genesis 2. Genesis 2 and verse 7. It said Judah was black unto the ground. Right? Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The first man ever created was of the dust of the ground. And when you look at the dust of the ground, what color is it? What color is dirt? Different shades of brown. When you look at the chemical makeup of our bodies, every single element that's in the earth, we have in our bodies. From the metals to all the different minerals and things of that nature. That's why the most I say from the dust, I'm going to bring you and I'm going to bring you back to the dust. Because we're from the ground. But we had skin from the ground as well. That's where we come from. God, well, that's why it says Judah morning. Read that again, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 14 and verse 2. Go ahead. Get up. Judah morning and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. So let me ask you a question, sisters. What color was Jesus Christ? Huh? Why is it important to know that as a people? We're going to show you in a second. But why is it important? Give me Matthew 1. Smith with madness, man. 
Read Matthew 1 verse 21. This is the purpose of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Matthew. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Because our people believe that Jesus Christ is some mythical figure that we get from Christianity used to oppress our people. But Jesus Christ is a figure used to actually redeem and to free our people from the mental captivity that we're in now. Right, and that we're right. not move, walking around like this brother here, like all these other lost souls here not knowing who we are bug the hell out of our minds, man. As a people hating ourselves, hating each other. Because we believe in a lie that was taught to us by our oppressors. Read Matthew 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. It says she shall bring forth a son. Read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. He's going to call his name Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ. Read. For he shall save his people. He shall save his people. He shall deliver his people. He shall get his people out of the captivity and the state that we're in. Read. From their sins. From your sins, sister. You understand that? From your sin, sister. So the question should be, how do we know that we Israelites? How do we know that the black man is, is from the tribe of Judah? How do we know that we're the people of the book? You want to know how we know? Because the Bible tells us so. Bible prophecy. That's right! This Bible, when was the Bible written? A couple years ago? Thousands of years ago, right? So let me ask you a question. What makes the Bible... The, 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 the best selling book on the planet right now, the most read book ever. There's a reason behind it, but our people, you, April, Vaughn, and every single person that's earshot in this thing need to understand that the secrets in this Bible is meant for us. But I, everybody goes into the Bible to try and get some form of salvation, some form of heaven. When you hear somebody say, oh, God and heaven and all these things, they get that from the Bible. They don't get it from no other religion, no other place. That comes from the Bible. Right. But how do we know we Israelites? Can, let me ask you a question. Is the state of our people today written in the Bible? I'm talking about today. I'm talking about slave ships. Our slavery, is that written in the Bible? So if we can show you that our slavery is written in the Bible, would that make you believe that the Bible is a spiritual book and the book is talking about you? It made me believe. Because all my life I was taught lies. And I was angry when I found out that this information was in the Bible. I was angry at my parents. I was angry at all the people flocking into the Christian church teaching lies about the scriptures while we walk around dead in the mind. Not knowing who the hell we are living in drug infested neighborhoods. Our sisters not, not valuing themselves enough to be anything. Our men not thinking anything of themselves but to be a ball player and a damn drug dealer or a nine to five worker for the rest of their damn life. Right. Read. Give, give me Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy. I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to give you a few more. I'm not going to hold y'all up too long. I got you. I got you. I understand. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Again, which ship? Start at verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It says, it shall come to pass, if the Israelites do not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. To observe, to do all of his commandments. Go ahead. And his statutes, mm -hmm. which I command thee this day. Well, we got to understand, when we read the book of Exodus, the Israelites promised the Most High and said, Hey, Most High, if you deliver us from this captivity, we will do whatever you command us to do. We made a covenant with the Most High God and said, We will do what you tell us to do, Lord. Right. We broke that covenant. We disobeyed God. Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Most High God, through Moses, is telling us, Hey, if you do not listen and do the commandments that I give you this day, all of these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. All of these curses. Give me verse 48. Verse 48. Watch this. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Because we don't keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, we have to serve our enemies. For what? 
which the Lord, which the Lord shall send against thee. Which God sent against us. So a lot of times we get mad, oh the white man's the devil, he's so evil, he's so wicked. Guess what? The most high God is behind that man coming down and whipping our behind. The most high God is behind that man coming here and oppressing us. You know? Because of our own disobedience. Read. And hunger. And hunger. So guess what? We go flip the seafood, you bought your fish. The gas stations there. Who really owns these properties and these stores? Fredo! A black man may come in there and say, hey, I want to rent this space out and open up a store there, but who are you getting the space from? The white man, right? It says, in hunger, when you get your food from your grocery store, who owns that store? The so-called white man. So he said, you're going to serve your enemies because your friends won't oppress you the way they do. You got a friend. Y'all two friends or family? Family, right? But she's your friend, right? Would you take, now let me ask you a question. If April has a child, would you take April's child and go sell her off to your neighbor, the person that lives next door? Guess what, if April do wrong by you, would you take April out back, tie her up to the post and whip her down there to death? Would you do that? Because you wouldn't do that to your friend, right? But your enemy would do that to you. Your enemy will give you the worst education and act like it's your fault. The enemy will build a system created through our poverty that, that we, were, we were given when they got us off the plantations and then and build prisons and not schools. Yeah. Feed you shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. Well, what y'all got from that? What y'all got from cooking? Fish. Fish. All right, well, read on. I want y'all to listen to this. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. If you need something to drink, you got to serve your enemies. Read. And, and nakedness. And the clothes that you have on your back right now, sisters, you had to get that from your enemy. Read. And in what of all things. And in the lack of all things. Guess what else we get from our enemies? The understanding of these scriptures. The understanding of who God is. The understanding of who we are as a people. That's right. We get that from our enemies as well. You think they're going to tell you the truth? So that you can overcome them? No, because this is their kingdom, sisters. But read, here's, here's how we know we Israel though, read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. That same enemy is going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Did this happen to our people? I'm asking, what people did this happen to, April? Your people, right? So what does that make you? If the Most High God said this is going to happen to the Israelites, right? And he said, he said, put a yoga vine upon their neck. Read on. Until he has destroyed thee. Until he has destroyed thee. Until he has you walking around thinking that you're an African American. Right. And not a child of the Most High God in Israel. Right. Before he, he has you thinking that you're a color in a crayon box and not an Israelite. Right. You understand that? But the Most High God said that that's going to happen to Israel. So what does that make the so-called blacks? If these things happen, and it was written of, and Moses said it's going to happen, what does that make you? What is your nationality? You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Right. That's right. Let's get another one. Give me the slave ship. A slave ship to the Bible. Y'all come back around for a second, man. Oh, man, y'all need to stop. I don't want my fish to be uh, left up in this bone. They got it in ice? Why they ain't put it in ice? What kind of fish spot give you fresh fish and don't put it in ice for you? You don't need to go there no more. But check this out. Give me five more minutes now. Come on, come on, come back around, man. I feel awkward. I feel awkward. Man. Five more minutes, man. You got it, cause I gotta show y'all something that y'all can probably fix. That you can do to show that you love God, cause y'all love God, right? So I'm gonna show you something after I show you this. Give me Deuteronomy 28:68, real quick. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Yep. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. It says, the Lord shall bring the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans into Egypt again with ships. So what is Egypt? You don't know, right? Let's read. We're going to show you what Egypt is. Read. Exodus 20 and verse 2. Read. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Read. Out of the house of bondage. Out of slavery. 
So Egypt is synonymous with slavery. How y'all doing right. today? Hey, somebody get them a flyer real quick, man. Egypt is synonymous with slavery. Right? Read on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. It says, and the Lord shall bring the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans into slavery again with what? With ships. With cargo ships that they put slaves on. Read up. You understand? So I'm, I'm at, see how people walk around like it's not a big deal. Your fish is more important than this. No, but I need to go cook it and feed my you, food. You'll be able to cook, but check this out here. Can you imagine being on a slave ship piled up like this? No. Women on their menstruals laying on top of you, laying next to you, people dying, defecating, urinating, yelling, screaming, all type of sickness and diseases. Burrito! And up on that ship for months. That's how our people were brought over here. Right. Right. That should make you feel some kind of way. That's right. That should that should peak something in you to be like, look, this thing here is more important than, than some fish. Bring it out. This is more important than any TV show. Right. This is more important than anything you need to know because you never know when you're going to hear this word again. If you're going to hear this word again. You understand? It's a serious thing because guess what? Little do you know, that's your four parents that was on them ships. That's why you're here now. Right. Your great, 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 great grandparent had to go through that in order for us to walk on this earth right now. Yeah. That's crazy. Free. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. The same way Moses said it was going to happen, just like this. Free. Thou shalt see it no more again. We'll never see our homeland again. Our homeland is Jerusalem. You ain't got to get it. They tell us we're from Africa, so they call us African American. No, we are from the motherland. Oh, we are from the land where, where the first man was created from the dust of the ground. Right. Jerusalem, that's Israel, right. that's where we're from. We are God's chosen people. That's right. right. The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are the greatest people to ever walk this earth here. That's, that's right. It's high time that we wake up out of sleep. Right. free. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. We were sold unto our enemies on auction blocks. Our children were sold from birth from the mother's womb, as two-year-olds, as ten-year-olds, to their enemies. Free. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Free. And no man shall buy you. Ain't no physical man gonna redeem us out of this captivity here. Only one that's gonna redeem us is Jesus Christ, the Black Messiah. That's right! right. Faith and I believe in Jesus Christ, the Black Messiah. You gotta believe that that man walked the earth and he died for us. He sacrificed his life. He was he was brutalized. He was tortured. And he was the greatest man to ever walk this earth here. And he and he did no sin. So our job is to bring our people back to God's law, statutes, and commandments. So I'm gonna give you a law and then we're gonna go. We're gonna yep. let y'all go. Give me any law. I don't care what it is. Any law. Because our people need to know this. Because it's going to free us from our mental state and it's going to actually lift our spirit up. Deuteronomy chapter, Three. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Watch this. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. This is the law that our people are breaking. One of God's laws. Right? Three. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Men putting on women's clothing is actually being pushed in society now. Men wearing skirts. You're, 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 you're most, you got hardcore thug rappers now wearing pumps, heels, man purses, tight pants with a skirt, skinny jeans, under their behind with their behind showing and stuff like that. The most like God said, a man should not put on a woman's garment though. So why do you think that's pushed in this society here? Why we see Puff Daddy, uh, all these other, uh, Will Smith, Young thug, all these dudes that, that are prominent figures in our community now wearing dresses. Bruno! And nobody gives a damn. No, none of our people care. But if they do care, they're too scared to stand up and say anything about it. Right. Or do something about it. But that's why the Most High God raised up the prophets today. Because we care. Right. And we stand up for it. And our job is to educate our people, whether you want to hear it or not. That's right. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So we establish what men wear. So let me ask you a question now, Vaughn and April. What are women wearing today that pertaineth unto a man? Pants. 
not just sagging pants, tight pants, pants in general. Hey, them, them right there, that's underwear, Vaughn. Oh. <laughs> I'm being serious. Them, them leggings that women wear now that's fashionable, that's meant to be underwear. That's meant, and y'all know that. Your tight pants now, that, that stuff is meant to be under a dress. Right? I mean, you're not supposed to have pants on at all. You're supposed to be wearing a dress. You say, no. And, and what, every time we bring that out to our people, why do our women act like that? Let me ask you a question. What problem do you have with wearing a dress, sis? Huh? You ain't going to no prom. You ain't, ain't going to no wedding. I went to a wedding. You had a dress on? You wore a dress. Why? Mm, bring it out! No, what they call Why? church or whatever. I don't know. To me, you're supposed to wear pants. Women ain't supposed to. So why are you wearing pants now, Vaughn? But that's what I do, baby. Right that's not what you that's what that's what you do, yes. Dress pants, what, yes, you can. God don't want our women to do that. Right. Right. But you said something heavy, pants. sister you April. I need to deal with that. I need stuff. to deal with that for a second. I need for you to answer this. Why would you wear a dress at a prom? Or at a wedding. Judge, it's like, huh? Come here, come here. Um, speak this in the mic. No. All right. Why would you do? I just need to hear. It. We gotta understand where our people are coming you from. You're in a wedding. Cause you're in a wedding. What? That's a big day. It's a big day. Girls wear dresses. Dudes wear suits. Right. Girls wear dresses, right? And dudes wear suits, right? Why though? Why is the women wearing dresses? What? What? What, what does a dress make you feel like? Why? Why? Why would because you wear? It's appropriate. It's appropriate. Why? Occasion. Uh, why though? What? When you put on that glorious dress at a prom or at a wedding, what does it make you feel like? Fabulous. It makes you feel fabulous, right? Yeah. The Most High God has ordained our women to feel fabulous every day of their life. That's oh. right. You understand that? You are meant. Give me that Deuteronomy seven and six. Our people need to hear this thing, man. You don't understand, sis. You don't need to. You don't need to, to bring yourself down to nobody. You're supposed to feel like every day the same way you go into a prom or the same way you go into a wedding because that's the type of people you are. Royalty. That's right. That's right. You are God's chosen people. The right. 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 black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are the greatest people to ever walk this earth here. Right. 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 Read that thing. The Bible's gonna tell you. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. Right. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Bible's telling you you are holy people unto God. Matter of fact, when y'all women walk in the church, y'all put on a dress on Sunday, for the most part. Mostly. Y'all put on a dress. Easter Sunday, you wearing a dress. You ain't wearing no pants. But we come out every day wearing pants. Why? Because we don't understand God's laws and who you are. An African-American woman walks around wearing pants. A black woman walks around wearing pants. But God's chosen people. A woman of the Most High God is going to wear a dress because she realizes that she is this. Read it again. Verse 6, or Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. Without art and holy people unto the Lord thy God. We are a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. The Most High God has chosen you. April, you Vaughn, you brother across the street. Every single so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, the most high God has chosen us. Free to be a special people unto himself. When something is special, it's not looking or doing the things of everybody else. When something is special, it stands out on its own. So guess what? If everybody else is wearing pants of those other nations, they're supposed to. Because they're less than you. You're, they're not holy, they're not who God chose. You're special to God, so you need to carry yourself as that special people. Right. right. You agree. Above all people. What? Above all people. What? Above all people. Most High God chose us to be above, better than all people that are where? That are upon the face of the earth. That are upon the face of this earth right here. We are the greatest people to walk God's earth. So Sister April, every day should be as a prom to you. You understand? We're not talking about a literal prom. Every day you should want to feel like royalty. Every day you should want to feel like a woman. Every, guess what? 
you got your tight pants on, right? I'm not, hey, listen, I'm not getting it. It's work clothes. Alright, work clothes, right? Yeah. Okay, when you go, when you at your job, you work in the Hampton Inn? Do men hit on you? Men don't hit on you? What about you, Vaughn? You don't deal with that? I right, women can't go nowhere. You got the tight pants on. Men don't don't walk around looking at you sometimes. Wish like, hey, hey, come here. You go the other way. But you want to you want to get away from that, right? You work with older men, but guess old people. All right, so then you probably ain't gonna experience that. But guess what, sis? When you wearing immodest apparel, our sisters perpetuate that image. That brings about. That brings about men that only gonna want you for sex. What they can get from you. Then we wonder why our our communities and our relationship is all jacked up. We wonder why our women are the ones not getting married. We wonder why our women are the ones with a, a baby from two different men. Bring it out. We wonder why our women are the ones getting getting raped and things of that nature. Because we're not following God's laws. Get that, Timothy. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Go ahead. Nope. And like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. God commands our women to adorn themselves in a modest dress. Not a tight fitting dress. Not a revealing dress. Damn sure not tight pants or pants. In a dress free flowing that your figure is not exactly. You know what it is. You know what it is already. You have the spirit in you. The thing is, you gotta start applying that thing now. Read, in modest apparel, read. With shame faces. With shame faces. Y'all can, I mean, I'm not gonna hold y'all up too long. I know you wanna get to your face, but, but listen to this as you go now. With and, shame faces, read. And sobriety. And sobriety, read. Not with braided hair. Not with braided hair. So it can't be about our hairstyles. Our women cannot be about how our hair is done. Our women cannot be about being sexy and attracting men. You understand? Our women have to be dressed in modest apparel to be an example to, to the young women and to be wives. Right. You understand? Read. Or gold. Or, or, right. or gold. Or pearls. Or costly array. Or costly array. Part of our costly array now, our women got, got costly hair on their head. $300 for a hair week. Bring it out! Because they don't understand that their own hair is the most beautiful thing ever created on earth. That's right! Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.